Summary of the Stranger by Albert Camus A shipping clerk named Musalt lives in a rundown apartment in Algiers that he used to share with his mother before he moved her to an old people's home that he doesn't go to very often. He gets a letter telling him that his mother has died at the beginning of the book. Mersault is not angry. The head of the home tells Musalt that his mother is happy at the home than she would have been in Algiers, which makes him feel better about sending his mother away. He tells Musalt that he has planned a religious funeral because that's what she wanted, but Musalt thinks to himself that his mother wasn't religious. When Musalt goes to the morgue, he surprises the worker by saying he doesn't want to see his mother's body. After smoking and drinking coffee together, they sit with his mother's friends at the coffin and watch the funeral. The crying of the friends makes Masalt, who is not emotional, angry. Early the next morning, Thomas Perez, Madam. Masalt's best friend and reported fiancé, joins the funeral parade. They walk through a hot, sparkling landscape to get to the church for the funeral, which Masalt doesn't really remember. On Saturday, Masalt meets Marie at the beach. They flirt, swim, see a comedy, and then go home together. Marie is shocked when she hears that Masalt's mother died. Monday, Masalt's neighbor Raymond asks him to dinner and tells him how much he wants to get back at his lover. He has Masalt write her a letter to get her to come back so he can shame her. Raymond now thinks of Masalt as a friend because he is happy. Raymond is hitting his lover next Saturday, and Masalt and Marie hear it. Raymond feels bad when a police officer frees her. Later, Masalt agrees to Raymond's request that he say that she cheated on him. He meets Salamano, who is sad because he lost the dog he always claimed to hate. Masalt turns down a move to Paris at work because nothing mattered. He tells Marie that it doesn't matter if he wants to marry her or not, he will if she wants him to. Marie, Masalt, and Raymond go to Masson's house on Sunday. Raymond is afraid that the Arab, who is the brother of his woman, is following him. Masalt and Marie are happy at the beach. As Masalt, Masson, and Raymond walk along the beach, they meet the Arab and his friend. Raymond tries to fight, but gives up when the Arab cuts him. Raymond is so angry that he won't go back to the beach. Masalt comes next. When they meet the Arabs, Masalt takes Raymond's gun. The Arabs run away. The heat makes Masalt dizzy, and he walks alone along the dazzling, red glare. He is surprised to see the Arab again, and the Arab pulls out a knife. Masalt shoots the man at the dazzling spear of sun that shines off of it. In jail, the examining judge tries to convert Masalt to Christianity but fails. Marie can only visit once, she can't come back. Masalt gets used to being in jail and spends his days thinking about his apartment. One year goes by. It's a big deal in the news, and the courtroom is packed. A lot of people talk about how cold Masalt was at the funeral of his mother, and the director and caretaker both say the same thing. After Masalt's lawyer makes progress, Marie hurts the defense by talking about how she went on her first date with Masalt the day after his mother died. At one point, Masalt's lawyer asks, is my client on trial for burying his mother or for killing a man? But the prosecutor makes a link between the funeral and the murder, making Masalt look like a heartless monster who planned to kill his mother at her grave. Masalt is mostly cool during the trial, he only gets angry when he feels like he isn't being involved in the procedures. As the prosecutor wraps up his case, he compares Masalt's crime to the parricide that will be tried the next day, saying that Masalt is morally guilty of killing his mother. Masalt has been given the death penalty. Masalt sends in a plea. He can't stop thinking about how unfair his decision was and how he will surely die by beheading. He dreams of a justice system that would give the condemned a chance. Think about both possible results of his request to stay calm, but he feels delirious joy whenever he thinks about living. The priest comes to see Masalt and talks to him about the future. It's like Masalt is screaming that there is only this life and that everyone is equally good and bad. He is happy and rid of hope. He opens to the gentle indifference of the world and believes that cries of hate would make him feel less alone. About the author. 
Camus was born in French Algeria in 1913. The next year, his father died in the First World War. Camus lived with his family in a two-bedroom apartment when he was a child. He worked to pay for his schooling at the University of Algiers, but he had to quit because he got tuberculosis. After that, Camus worked as a reporter for a newspaper in Algiers that was against the French colonial government. During World War II, he worked for the resistance in Paris. Camus came up with his idea of the ridiculous while he was living in Paris. Absurdism says that life has no purpose in a world that doesn't care about us, but Camus believed in the worth of people and their ability to find happiness. Camus wrote many books besides his first novel, The Stranger. These included The Plague, The Fall, and psychological writings like The Myth of Sisyphus and The Rebel. He won the Nobel Prize in 1957 for the wide range of ways his work affected intellectual and artistic life. In 1961, Camus died in a car crash. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.